Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be taking a look at the series from the perspective of the unsung heroes that are our medical professionals. One Piece being a series that focuses primarily on combat in extraordinarily dangerous environments presents an incredible demand for skilled healers to keep our adventurers alive. And given their importance, I think it's an absolute shame that they don't receive more focus, but that's what we here at the Grand Line Review are going to rectify today. The criteria for this list is as follows. A doctor in this context will be defined as a medical practitioner. So if there were any ideas about people like Vegapunk or Caesar Clown appearing on this list, let's quash those right now. Completely different kind of doctors there. I mean, in theory, you can become a doctor of anything. In fact, one of my university lecturers had a doctorate in drawing. And well, as a result, he will not be appearing on this list. Furthermore, all doctors appearing here today must be canon, because just think about it. Would you really place your life in the hands of a filler doctor? That's right, I didn't think so. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five dependable doctors in One Piece. Number five. Dr. Kureha. We'll be commencing this list with incredibly high standards because Dr. Kureha is one of the finest medical minds in the world as we know it. In fact, this genius of healing possesses knowledge so advanced that she appears to have been able to keep herself alive and well, far beyond what a regular human should be capable of, currently sitting at the youthful age of 141. To further demonstrate her skill, Kureha is able to perform simple tasks such as taking someone's temperature without the aid of any medical equipment whatsoever, and proceed to produce extremely accurate results. So with all of this in mind, you'd expect that Kuraha would easily be at the pinnacle of this list, but the main thing holding her back is her bedside manner. A doctor's attitude towards a patient can be extraordinarily important in the healing process, and well, let's just say that Kuraha has been known to get a bit violent with patients that don't follow her instructions. The treatment process can also be quite eccentric in general, not unlike an episode of House, really, and Kuraha also demands quite a high price for her services, often leaving patients on the verge of financial ruin. But once again, her skill simply cannot be denied, and these days she has even formed her own medical academy on Drum Island, taking the issue 20 and turning them into the Ishi 100. So she certainly is one hell of a dependable doctor, but only if you can afford her fee. Number 4. Aladdin. Next up, we have the Merman Doctor of the Sun Pirates, famed for the exploits of their captain, Fisher Tiger. As the doctor of a pirate crew that often got into incredibly violent conflicts, Aladdin's skill as a healer is top notch. In fact, his skill was such that he would have been able to save the life of his captain, Fisher Tiger, should he have agreed to it. The problem came in the fact that at the time, the Sun Pirates only had access to human blood for a transfusion, and Fisher Tiger simply could not stomach the idea of living with that in his veins, choosing death instead. However, Aladdin remained with the Sun Pirates and continued to work his healing magic most notably tending to the wounds of Saint Mosgard, a world noble who became fish-wrecked Fishwrecked. Mm. A world noble who became shipwrecked on Fishman Island, as well as the queen of the Rigu Kingdom, Otohime, who used her own body as a shield to prevent most guard from being shot. As for modern day patients, we need look no further than Whole Cake Island, as the Sun Pirates, led in the interim by Aladdin, oversaw the recovery of Pecoms after his betrayal at the hands of Capone Gang Beige. That's quite a few prominent patients in total there, and absolute proof that Aladdin more than deserves his place on this list. Number three. Trafalgar Law. With an epithet like Surgeon of Death, it's completely reasonable to wonder why Trafalgar Law makes this list at all. In reality, Law isn't such a scary guy after all. In fact, not only was he born into a family of doctors, but his father happened to be the best doctor in all of Flavance, so his medical career was on the fast track from the very beginning. But during his childhood, he also acquired a phenomenal devil fruit known as the Ope Ope no Mi. And this fruit took Law's medical abilities to an entirely new level, and allows him to perform even the most complex of surgery with ease. I mean, just to demonstrate, Law is a man who can literally remove a person's heart without killing them, so this fruit isn't to be underestimated, and neither is law to be fair. It's only through combination with his hard-earned expertise that this ability is allowed to thrive. With that said, Law has never really shown a keen desire to pursue the field of medicine, it's just an extra skill that he possesses, which makes achieving his own personal goals significantly easier at times. Honestly, I'd go so far as to say that Law is the greatest surgeon in the One Piece world, however, there is a bit more to being a dependable doctor than that. Number two. Tony, Tony Chopper. Now here's one we were all expecting to appear and having been trained by the number five contender, Dr. Kureha, it's no surprise that this half reindeer, half human is in a very rare class when it comes to the field of medicine, capable of administering advanced surgery and resuscitation. However, Chopper has a far, far greater asset, which comes in his knowledge of pharmacology, having studied extensively on Drum Island as well as in the vast library of the Torino Kingdom in South Blue. Furthermore, as a result of Chopper's time in the Torino Kingdom, he has gained access to herbs and remedies completely unknown to the rest of the world. But Arguably, Chopper's greatest asset 
that as a medical professional is his drive to help people, regardless of circumstance. Chopper has no interest in reward or the world of academia, he simply wants to heal and even possesses a dream of one day curing all disease. Boss Chopper has the exceptionally difficult task of healing Luffy, Zoro and Sanji, all three of whom manage to accumulate potentially life-threatening injuries on a regular basis. In fact, there is no doubt in my mind that one day Chopper will become the greatest doctor this world has ever seen, but as for right now, we still need to examine number one. Crocus. Moving into the realm of more legendary figures, we have none other than the Doctor of the Roger Pirates. Crocus was recruited as an integral member of the crew in order to keep Roger, who had contracted a terminal disease, alive long enough to complete his final journey. And alive he was kept thanks to Sir Crocus, who managed to stabilize the Pirate King for three years. And in fact, the former first mate of the Roger Pirate, Silvers Rayleigh, has even stated that he was the only one in the world capable of performing such a feat. Following the disbandment of the Roger Pirates, Crocus returned to his home at Twin Capes to put his skills to use healing the Whale Laboon, who had become self-harming out of distress and longing for the Rumbar Pirates. And here Crocus demonstrated what I would certainly call an unconventional level of medicine by building an elaborate system of tunnels inside of Laboon in order to treat him as he had grown far too big for regular medicine to be applied from the outside. Crocus has gone above and beyond in every aspect of being a doctor, possessing world-class medical knowledge and even greater ability to apply it and an unwavering commitment to the health of his patients. This man is a legend not simply for his exploits as one of the Roger Pirates, but as one of the finest healers in the entire series. And that pretty much does it for the top 5 dependable doctors in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favourite doctors in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.